What makes sharks so interesting is they're just plain cool. Sharks are top-level predators, and as a result, they exert an influence throughout the entire ecosystem. This is why they're so important to look at how these sharks are influencing all the other organisms around them. That's exciting to everyone, from little kids to adults like me. Hi, I'm Stephen Kajura. I'm a professor in the biology department at Florida Atlantic University. For the past 10 years, I've been studying the migration of black-tipped sharks as they come down to South Florida here. And uh, what we're doing now is we're starting to expand our program. We've been looking at the black tips for a number of years now, and the next natural iteration of that is to look at the predators of the black tips, the great hammerhead sharks that are feeding on them. That's what we're starting to do now, to see if they are feeding on the black tips when the black tips come down in the wintertime. So for the past decade now, we've been doing aerial surveys flying along the coast. And we started this because I kept getting calls from the local news media. Their helicopters had seen lots of sharks and along the beaches. And they wanted to know if this was a concern, a problem. And so it was a great opportunity for me as a pilot to get a plane, start flying along the beach with cameras mounted out the windows here. So we we're able to see where the sharks were and actually count them to get an idea of when the sharks were here, where they were distributed, and in particular, what species are around. For the aerial survey work, we fly along the beach with a high-definition video camera mounted out the window of the plane and a still camera beside it. We fly the flights at about 500 feet off the surface of the ocean. So that gives us a field of view from the beach to about 200 meters offshore. Think of it as two football field lengths offshore. And that enables us to count the numbers of sharks that are immediately adjacent to the beach, where they have the greatest possibility of interacting with the humans. We'll also make note of where these animals are located along the coast so we're able to go back with the uh, drone later on to say, uh, let's fly in this particular area. That's where we saw a lot of sharks. When we're done with the flight, we bring the video back to the lab where we download it on the computer, and we can play it back frame by frame to count the numbers of sharks that we're seeing along the length of the transect. When we record video that looks like this. We've been looking at the abundance of these black tip sharks from the aerial surveys for a decade now. And what we found is that there's huge numbers of sharks in the winter season, and then very few in the summer. And it corresponds nicely with the water temperature. In the winter, we have low water temperatures and huge shark abundances, whereas in the summertime, very few sharks when the water is warm. And she sets up this nice inverse correlation uh, with shark abundance and water temperature. And what we see is that in the wintertime, before the sharks get here in abundance, we're averaging maybe, maybe one shark per square kilometer. It's not very many. But once the sharks start to arrive en masse in peak season, we're getting numbers in excess of 1,200 sharks per square kilometer. This is a huge difference. And to sort of put that into perspective, what's 1,200 sharks per square kilometer? Think of it this way. It's the equivalent of you swimming off the back of your boat. Within 16 meters of you, there's a shark. That's how many sharks we're talking about here. And with so many of these black tip sharks, it led to the natural question, well, what are the predators doing? What about the great hammerheads? And that's what we're looking at now. The black tip sharks come down to South Florida and spend the winter down here. But when you have tens of thousands of these top level predators, they need to be eating something. And that led to the incorporation of block cams. This is just a GoPro camera on a concrete block. We drop it in the water, we record who swims by, and we see when the bait fish are here, what species of bait fish are here, and if the abundance of bait fish really corresponds with the abundance of the black tip sharks. So when it comes to tracking the hammerhead sharks, we don't know if they're following the black tips as they migrate along the coast, or whether the hammerheads are staying here in South Florida year round. This is something that we're exploring. We simply don't have an answer yet. So the first step to do shark research is to actually catch the animal. We're about to go out fishing. All right, so we just dropped the bait. Now we're going to drop the big block. Ryan's dropping the concrete block and lowering that down to the bottom. To study the great hammerheads, we're using the same techniques that we use with the black tips. A large concrete block a long monofilament line, yeah. baited hook on the end, and a float going up to the surface. And toss the float. And what this does is when we drop that in the water and a shark gets caught on the hook, it's able to continue to freely swim 
around that concrete block until we're able to bring it up to the surface. That enables the shark to continue to breathe and, and do well and not be stressed while it's caught on the line. So just like we did with the black tips before them, we do the same thing with the hammerheads. Working up a shark consists of bringing the shark up beside the boat, putting a tail rope around it. Then we're able to take measurements of how long it is, see if it's a male or a female. We put a little ID tag in the base of the dorsal fin, and then in some cases put a satellite transmitter on the fin. And that enables us to follow their movements to get location data as that shark is swimming along the coast. Shark research is really important to marine ecosystems because these sharks are at the top of the food chain. And to really understand how the whole food web works, you really need to understand how these top level predators are impacting all the other subsequent levels underneath them. So as I've been doing this work for the past decade, there have been so many questions we've been able to answer. There are so many unanswered questions, you know, big picture questions, like what's the ecology of these animals? How are they related to each other? Who's eating who? And uh, this is an area that's ripe for future research. So I really hope this is something that you're interested in taking over and uh, exploring in the future.